The upshot of it is that there have been a couple of major meta-analyses in the past, uh, say, year or two, one in JAMA in particular, uh, that have attempted to put together all the trials on medical marijuana for all purposes, and basically moderate quality evidence emerges for neuropathic pain um, and um, spasticity in MS um, and some forms of chronic pain, but for most other indications there is not good evidence. It's all different kinds of preparations of can cannabinoids. It's, there's uncertainty in my mind about what exactly neuropathic pain is versus chronic pain. Mm -hmm. um, there's a suggestion that this is helpful for many people. Um, there's also a lot of uh, information to suggest that chronic pain is very hard to treat anyway. The uh, treatments that we have are not the greatest for the same reasons that perhaps cannabis or cannabinoids are not the greatest either. Um, so it's one more potential option, um, but there is the difficulty that it's not legal. I think that, that actually it is legal in some parts of the world. It can be studied to some extent, although it's very difficult to do so in the U.S. Um, doctors in the U.S., physicians are federally licensed. It's illegal federally. The states are some of them, about half, have legalized it, but that doesn't mean a doctor can prescribe because his or her license comes from the federal government. It's a mixed up mess, really. Um, what I would say is this, that over the past uh, 25 years, the endocannabinoid system on which the marijuana and the contents would work has become better understood as a neuromodulatory system that interacts with all the other neurotransmitter systems, and there's lots of promise there. Right now, something that I think gives many physicians fits is that the patient will decide, particularly if it's smoked cannabis, how much is the right amount rather than the doctor, and will use it to affect whatever effect they want that to be. There are also a variety of anticonvulsants and other drugs, all of which have um, some benefit but noxious side effects. One of the articles I'm going to cite actually doesn't, it mentions many other uh, pain uh, uh, medications but not cannabis, and you c the, the conclusion is about the same, that there's moderate evidence these things help, but they have many side effects and problems. Um, I, I think the issue uh, really is, again, what the balance is between the therapeutic benefit, if it's pain relief, and the recreational value, which was is getting high. There's also it's sort of a fuzzy boundary because in some sense maybe getting higher or, or it means you don't care about your pain so much anymore. All of this is really pretty amorphous, I would say. The question answers itself. Uh, um, if a patient tries this and they report that the quality of their life is better, then that's the subjective evidence you need, I would suppose. Um, doctors in the U.S. can recommend um, it's a funny situation, I, at least marijuana probably is not as dangerous in terms of killing you immediately as opioids, uh, although there is emerging evidence that perhaps more people have car crashes who are using, um, that cogn cognition is definitely affected, and in adolescence and up to age 25 that brain development is affected. I think that with a terrible problem like neuropathic pain, you're always going to be making compromises uh, between the benefit and the, the danger or the problem of the drug. One thing I've learned in my research is that the notion that this is you know, innocuous is frankly ridiculous. And the other thing that's really interesting about this particular uh, compound is its 5,000 year history of use as a botanical. And um, the American system for developing drugs that are approved doesn't uh, have hardly any botanicals that have been approved. It's complicated when the, substan the, the plant itself has 60 or 70 cannabinoids in it, plus many other substances, and there's no drug that I'm aware of that's smoked. My understanding of, of neuropathic pain is that it doesn't get cured, it gets managed. Mm -hmm. Um, because there is some kind of uh, central or peripheral damage to the nerve that can't be fixed, but it can be ameliorated. So that's what this would be one more thing to potentially use. 
I think that it's not all 50 states, it's a federal issue. And, and what would happen at the federal level, would it, be, it would be rescheduled. It's Schedule 1, which means, according to the federal government, that it has no medicinal value and is at high risk of uh, being abused. Um, even Schedule 2, which would be a drug like um, morphine, would at least uh, have the same warnings about abuse potential, but also the idea it might have some benefit. By rescheduling the drug, it will make it easier to do research on it. And one of the fascinating things about cannabis per se is that the, the plant has its own proponents um, as an herbal medicine, but the notion that in the time since the plant was um, made Schedule One in the U.S., uh, we've discovered all kinds of things about the endocannabinoid system means that we really could think about tailoring drugs to that system if we understood it better. The challenge is it's all subjective, and, and uh, the first paper that I read about this topic was called Blurred Boundaries. So it's almost impossible to talk about medicinal use without also talking about recreational use, and because the two overlap. And so on the one hand, uh, I mean my own state came out with a very restrictive um, state law, but um, it's so restrictive that many people just simply go to the weed they can get from their local seller. For speaking about research, the res drugs in the U.S. are developed for the FDA, they're not developed at the state level. So it would be a radical new idea for a state to have it down. Also, there have been two drugs on the formulary since 1985 that are both um, uh, cannabinoids. There's uh, Marinol, uh, which is um, THC in a synthetic form, and Sesamet, which is a closely related um, THC-like compound that's also made. So those exist in the formulary, and they can be prescribed. They're Schedule two and three, um, but they're taken by mouth, and they have a delayed onset and a longer action. So there's a, a further argument that well smoked or vaporized uh, gives you an instant response and you can get rid of the badness if it happens quickly as well. well the reality is uh, that, m that most of the commonly abused drugs actually have legitimate uses and are scheduled. Mm -hmm. For example, um, amphetamine, methamphetamine is scheduled um, in a way that it can be prescribed. Um, heroin is a Schedule One drug, but many opioid derivatives are Schedule Two sc and Schedule Three. Um, so uh, it, it is strange. Uh, historically, there may be reasons for this that it is singled out, but um, the, the, the evidence supporting it as a Schedule One drug is really not very good. Never was. One of the points that I make is that the drug was made illegal in the absence of science, and the states are legalizing it in the absence of science. So there's really no science that has gone into these decisions.